The spark of the Holy Ghost is here. Can you feel the Holy Spirit moving? Well, quickly get a hold of your Bibles this morning. And I feel stirred to preach. I feel stirred to bring the word. You know, the word puts fuel on the flame. Amen. So we need the word. Say we need the word. Joshua chapter 6. When you get there to Joshua chapter 6, verse 17, I want you to say, protect the power. God is good. The Lord is good in this place. I, I don't hear you. When you get there, say, protect the power. Verse 17 says, now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, it and all who are in it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all who are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. Someone say prayer. That, that little line there of Rahab hiding the messengers is a picture of prayer. So everybody say prayer. Verse 18, it says, And you, by all means, abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Tell your neighbor, don't touch those things. They're trouble. Verse 20 says, so the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout the shout there was the shabak say shabak as the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat and then the people went up into the city every man straight before him and they took the city now, very quickly, jump over to chapter 7 and verse 10. I really want to read this to you. They won the victory in Jericho, but immediately after they suffered defeat in Ai. And Joshua became depressed. It says in verse 10, so the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? He says, Israel has sinned. And they've also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived. And look at this. And they put it amongst their stuff. <laughs> Someone say, protect the power. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemy. I've got a word in my spirit for you today. And that word is to protect the power. I'm going to say it to everybody shouts. I've got a word for you today from the Lord. And as we get ready to close out 2020, the word from the Lord to you is protect the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Have your way this morning, Father. Give your neighbor a high five. You may be seated. Thank you. Woo. You can feel the power of the Holy Ghost here today. How many of we, we've got to protect the power? I don't know if we have any boxing fans here. But on November 28th this month, the legendary fighter Mike Tyson is stepping back into the boxing ring. Now, if you're familiar with Mike Tyson, you know that he was the most electric fighter to ever enter the ring because Mike was a knockout artist. His top five fastest knockouts were all under 39 seconds in the first round. His reputation as a fighter preceded him because of his 
power. That the minute he stepped into the ring, his opponents began shaking in their boots. Now today, Mike Tyson is 54 years old. And when Mike steps back into the ring, people all over the world are going to tune in so that one question could be answered. What is that question? Does Mike still have the power? Just like fans all over the world are going to tune in to Mike Tyson. I'll tell you, people from all over the world are tuning in to the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ. And they have a question. The question is, does the church still have the power of the Holy Spirit? Do we still have the power to seek and save the lost and see them delivered once and for all? Do we still have the power to see the sick recover? Do we still have the power to overcome the diabolical schemes and lies of the enemy? That's the question I've got for some of you this morning. You might have started out 2020 with power, but are you finishing with the same power? The question is, do we still have the victory? I can feel the victory in this place this morning. The reason I talk to you about power is because to be a part of the ministry of Victory Outreach is to be a part of a ministry that has a legacy, a legacy of power. The legacy of our ministry is power. That every time you come to a church service at Victory Outreach, it's not just to have a Bible study. But we come to the house of God to encounter the very power of the Holy Spirit. We're a ministry of miracles. Someone say miracles. This Bible that we read is all about miracles from Genesis to Revelations. In the Bible, there are 164 documented miracles, 81 miracles in the Old Testament, 83 miracles in the New Testament. And as I preach to you to this morning, I came to tell you, you are a miracle. You may not be what you want to be, but thank God you're not what you used to be. I'm looking at a miracle this morning. You say, well, pastor, I've got all kinds of hangups. I got all kinds of issues. It doesn't matter. God's not done with you yet. You're just a miracle in motion because in Victory Outreach, we still believe in the power of miracles. And, I, and, I, and I've got a question for you this morning. Do you still have the power? Do you still have the power? See, everybody wants power. We're living in a day where people are hungry for power. But what is the secret to real power? Let me put it this way. For there to be real power, there must be fire. Ian Bounds, a great author on prayer, said no amount of money, genius, or culture can move things for God. The kingdom of God is like an engine on a car or an engine that moves a train. For the engine to move, there must be fire. If that engine in a car is going to start, there must be a spark. And if that engine on a train is going to move down the tracks, brothers and sisters, there's got to be coal that is put in the fire. My question is, do you still have the fire of the Holy Spirit in your life? See, there's got to be fire. Somebody say fire. fire. The real secret to power, according to E.M. Bounds, is a cry for more. Ah. Woo. The real secret to power is not to be satisfied. Ah. See, I, I, 10 of you are with me this morning. I, you can take notes if you want, but I want you to lock in to my spirit this morning. The real secret to power is a cry for more. It's when the people say, Lord, I know there's more. You've been good in the past, but I know there's more. I've tasted and seen that you are good, but I know that there is more. It's a cry for more. It's a cry for more love. It's a cry for more passion in your life. It's a cry for more faith. But you know 
that in order to tap into more power and more faith and more passion, there must be more consecration. And you know that when you are in consecration and there's more consecration, there's more prayer. Ian Bounds said God's chariot is a fiery one. And it cannot be moved by horses. It must be moved by men and women who've been set aflame by the power of the Holy Spirit. What did I come to talk to you about this morning? I came to tell you that if you want real power, you've got to be willing to go to war on the floor. Some of you, if you want the power of God in this season, it's time for you to get out of your seat and pull up some carpet. It's time to put your face on the ground, get into your prayer closet, and say, Lord, I'm not leaving this place until I get more power, more anointing, more breakthrough, more. Oh, my God. Somebody say more. No, say it like you want to say more. Let's talk about prayer for a minute. Is that okay? Because I'm going to tell you, prayer is not something you do. Prayer is a lifestyle. You stepped into a church this morning where we don't just pray on Sunday. Prayer is a lifestyle. You stepped into a church this morning where fasting is a lifestyle. There are more people in this church that have lost weight this year. It ain't the keto. It's the fasting. It's the consecration. It's the lifestyle of prayer. Someone say prayer. Let's talk about prayer. Let me tell you something about prayer. Prayer is violence. Woo! Some of you need to tune into this message. What is prayer? Prayer is sweet violence. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven suffer violence. Woo. Come on, my prayer people. Help me preach this morning. The kingdom of heaven suffer violence, but the violent take it by force. Someone say sweet violence. The sweet violence of prayer in the heavens activates the power of God in the earth. Let me tell you why prayer is so important is that intercession interrupts the plans of the enemy in your life. The enemy has put a target on your back. He's put a target on your marriage. He's put a target on your family. He's put a target. I mean, he, he, the worst thing he could have done is messed up, with, messed with the church. Because when he messed with the church, he woke up a sleeping giant of prayer. When you intercede, it interrupts the plans of the enemy. That's why in this moment we are in right now, Victory Outreach San Diego, this is the moment to cover your marriage in prayer. This is the moment to cover your little babies in prayer. This is the moment to cover your church in prayer. This is the moment to cover your friends in prayer, to cover your brothers and sisters. We need a church that will go to war on the floor. We don't need to march in the streets because we get more done in prayer than we do in the streets. Fight for your family in prayer. Let me talk to the preachers this morning. Do we got any preachers in the house? Say, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm a teacher. No, you're a preacher this morning. Let me talk to the preachers this morning. Preachers, don't just preach, pray. Don't just preach, fast. Fast and pray so that the church can be ignited when you speak. Preachers who pray move God towards the people so that the people can move towards God. When you pray, and you preach, your assignment is not to move the people towards God. Your assignment is to move God towards the people. When you get up on this platform, whether you're a preacher or you're a minister or you're a Bible study leader or you're a singer or you're a worshiper or you're a musician, 
or if you even just come up here to give a testimony, you're not coming up here to say something. You're coming up here so that the people could watch you burn. <laughs> because fire creates curiosity. That when you come up here, you are not coming up here to act in some theater play. Leonard Ravenhill said this, actors are good at making fake things look real and real things look fake. We don't need no fake preachers. We don't need no fake Bible study leaders. We don't need no fake singers. We don't need no fake. We need some people that have spent time beyond the veil. We need some people that have gone beyond the veil. You've gone from the outer courts to the inner courts to the Holy of Holies. And when you come out of the Holy of Holies, you come out baptized in the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, my God. Somebody say fire. Prayer is sweet violence. I came to tell you, we didn't come to church to be sweet and to look good and to look cute. We came to the house of God to get violent in the spirit. I don't know about you, but all hell has been unleashed in 2020. But the Bible says he's given us the power and the authority to pull down strongholds, to break the spirit of... Are there any people this morning... Somebody say fire. fire. Woo. To get the fire, you've got to come out of religion. To get the fire, you've got to get into a relationship with the Holy Spirit this morning. Pray. Woo. My God, I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord in this place. It's that sweet violence. Prayer is also a special work. There's power through prayer. There's power through prayer. That's why Satan does all he can to hinder your prayer. Because Satan knows that a person who is feeble in prayer is feeble in life-giving forces. Don't speak death. Speak life. Woo, come on, somebody. Someone say, speak life. A person who's feeble in prayer is feeble in life-giving forces. And whatever hinders prayer, watch this, hinders faith. Miracles, evidence is the proof of faith. Faith is the proof of prayer. The church needs power in this moment. The church needs more miracles, more breakthrough, more healing. The church needs to come alive at another level. I've been studying our church for the last year. We've been in revival, but I came to tell you there's levels to revival. Just like anything in the kingdom of God, there's levels. Someone say levels. There's the seed season. That's the baby season of revival. That's when the seeds of revival had been planted. Did heaven open up? Did heaven up, open up over our church? Did miracles move? But then that seed begins to mature. The nature of a seed is to grow. Revival is growing in you. But the reason it doesn't feel like revival is because when God wants to take it to another level, it can't stay a seed. Eventually, he has to prune what is planted. 
Oh, my God. Some of you thought you lost the revival. You didn't lose the revival. You're just being pruned by the Holy Ghost so that God could give you a fresh anointing, a fresh breakthrough, a fresh spirit. Oh, come on. Something has to die in you so that something could be brought back to life again. That's why the devil wants to hinder your prayer. He does all he can to choke your prayer life. How many want to go to the next level of revival? God bless half of you. How many want to go to the next level of revival? Then it's time to take prayer off the bargaining table. <laughs> it's time to stop negotiating your prayer life. My goodness. See, a person who's too busy to pray is too busy to live holy. And a person who's too busy to pray is too busy to move in the supernatural. You're not saying nothing to me this morning. I said you're not saying nothing to me this morning. We need some people that understand that there's power in prayer. A couple months ago as a church, we, separate, we fasted and consecrated for 10 days. I can tell you that on that 10th day when, when I got up there to preach in the tent, we were praying and fasting for what we're seeing now because the house of God is packed. And God is doing a work in people. I'm seeing people come to church. You haven't been in church in a while. Well, let me tell you now here because you decided to come, we fasted you in. We fasted. We prayed you in, baby. We fasted. We, we put down the Chick-fil-A so that you could come to church on Sunday. And on that 10th day, man, when I got up here, you were, you were at the altar just like you were today. And let me tell you, I couldn't even preach because it was like a wall of fire. It was as if the, as if the pillar of fire pouring out on the altar and the power of God was not only tangible it was so heavy and God was burning things off of people he was burning chains off of people he was burning fear off of people he was breaking habits in this place do you still believe that when you fast the power of God is able to move in your life someone say it's a special word and, and lastly, prayer activates special power. Let me, let me tell you, sadly, 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 I say this with mourning in my heart, is that even in the church of Jesus Christ, prayer is rare. And I say this to you that also prayer is not popular. There are so many other things that are popular in the house of God. Leadership is popular. Methods are popular. Strategies are popular. Preaching is popular. Music is popular. But prayer is so unpopular. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If you're going to preach, you're going to need some talent. If you're going to sing, you're going to need some talent. If you're going to lead, you're going to need some talent. But did you know that prayer requires no talent? You don't need any talent to talk to God. You need some talent to preach, and you need some talent to lead, and you need some talent to sing, and you need some talent. You got to have the right clothes, and you got to have it, you know, you got to be at a certain degree of excellence to get up on the platform. But let me tell you something you could be serving God one day and look all messed up and not have one talent, but your prayers are more effective. 
Because prayer doesn't require any talent. All prayer requires is faith. <laughs> That's why John Wesley said, I'd rather have 10,000 prayer warriors than 10,000 preachers. Because prayer doesn't require any talent. I want you to know that prayer is where the real action is. And what the enemy's been doing overtime, working overtime during 2020, is to trying to get you out of your prayer closet. He's trying to turn prayer warriors into performers. And I want to tell you that when you tap into prayer, you're, you're tapping into an unlimited storehouse. An unlimited storehouse. There's a story that Jesus tells about a man who found a pearl in a field. And the Bible says that when he found that pearl in the field, that buried treasure, he went, sold all he had, and he went back and he bought the whole field. Why did he buy the whole field? Because he says there's unlimited treasure here. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Some of you come to church, you're so busy looking for a pearl. And a pearl might get you by for a day. And a little word from the pastor and a little greeting from somebody in the house of God might get you by for a week. But what would happen if you sold everything you had and you went back and bought the field? See, some of you ain't. Don't you know that there's nothing special about preachers? Other than we just bought the field and you haven't yet? When you tap in the prayer, you're tapping in to an unlimited kingdom. That's why I came to tell you, don't let the enemy strangle your prayer life. There are some of you that the whole assignment in your life this morning is for you to get your fire back. For you to get your praise back. For you to get your prayer life back. Prayer has power. Prayer has subdued the strength of fire, bridled the rage of lions, hushed anarchy to rest, extinguished wars, stopped the elements, expelled demons, burst the chains of death, stopped diseases, repelled frauds, rescued cities from destruction, stopped the sun, and has opened up the heavens prayer is the root the foundation and the mother of all blessings in your life come on and give God praise I'm almost done give him praise what would happen what would happen what would happen to you that if before this year's over I got a little bit more before this year's over what would happen to you if you took one entire night? No hype, no hoopla, no church people. You took one night and spent that whole night with God. What would happen? We give ourselves to so many things throughout the day. We give ourselves to work, to problems, to family, to children, to eating, to eating, to eating, to eating. But what would happen? I feel God. If you just took one night and wrestled 
with the Lord to the breaking of day. You said, honey, leave me alone. Kids, leave me alone. Phone, get out of here. And you had a Bethel experience with God. Oh, my God. This is helping you more than you even realize it. And you went into a solitary place. And you said, Lord, I am here because I have many troubles in my life. I am here because this has been the hardest, worst year of my life. Lord, I am here because I am heavy laden and there are responsibilities that I have in my life. But Lord, tonight, this one night, this, <laughs> this night is your night. What could happen if you said, I'm not leaving 2020 until I get my prayer life back? <laughs> Watch this. Jacob spent one night with God, and God took a crafty shuffler and turned him into a prevailing prince. One night with God. Jesus spent entire nights of prayer. And nights of prayer translated into days of power. I don't know who I came to talk to. You know, frankly, could I be honest with you? This year I've walked into this place not knowing who's going to be here. So the pressure has been on me. Not to preach to faces, but to be the voice of God in somebody's life. And I've had to spend time alone. And I've had to say, I can't leave that place if, until I hear from God. And let me tell you something, man. I'm not here to make friends. And I'm not here to give out goosebumps. I'm here because God wants to come close to you. What would happen if, if, if you simply took one night? Someone said one night. one night. See, I'll tell you why you need one night with God. Because God doesn't anoint methods. He anoints men. He doesn't anoint methods. He anoints men and women. We're in a season right now where everything's changing. Didn't that song say that? Say, everything's changing. God is shuffling people around. God's moving preachers. God's moving leaders. God's moving. Mm, things are happening in this place. But God's not shocked. He's just preparing somebody. What, what if it was that you were the one God wanted to use? What if it were that you were the one that in this season... Where others are stepping aside, you're stepping up. What if it is that if someone's season came to an end, but your season is coming to a start? I'm just speaking what the Lord told me to say. Woo. Say God says it's your season. No, say it was. Say it was, though. Say God says it's your season. Say God says you're going to lead in this season. You're, you're going to lead the family. You're going to lead the ministry. You're going to lead. What if God said it's you? Wouldn't you want to be anointed? If, if, if God's going to anoint something, he's got to crush it. Because the only way you get oil out of an olive is you got to crush that thing. What would happen if you took one night with the Holy Ghost and said, Lord, I'm not leaving this place until you crush dead things in my life.
Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Protect the power. Someone say, protect the power. Where are you on God's power meter? Joshua lost a very simple and critical battle of AI because where the nation stood on the power meter. Ask your neighbor, where are you on the power meter? They had just come out of Jericho. I'm, I'm going to end right now. They had just come out of Jericho, but I feel like I got to get this out because the Lord gave me this first. They had just come out of Jericho where through the power of God, they defeated Jericho with a shout, with a shabak. They took the ram's horns and they blew the shafars with the shout. And the Bible says the walls fell flat. This was the single greatest miracle outside of the Red Sea. The miracle of the Red Sea was God's demonstrating power in his creation. The miracle of Jericho was God demonstrating power through his creation. The miracle of Jericho was of Red Sea was God demonstrating power over, over what he created. The miracle of Jericho was God demonstrating power over what man created. Jericho was a beautiful city, one of the oldest in the first cities built. It was a beautiful city because it was full of palm trees. It was an oasis. But they knew what they had. And how many know the devil's always trying to rip off the good things? So they built walls around it. In scripture, palm trees represent refreshing. But when they raise their voice, God removed what was blocking them from being refreshed. The miracle of Jericho is a miracle of refreshing. The miracle of Jericho is a miracle of new life. The miracle of Jericho, watch this, is the grace of revival. But AI, in the original language, means heap of ruins. Jericho represented revival. AI represented ruin. They were embarrassed by the defeat of AI. That after defeating and experiencing revival at Jericho, they come to this small town and they didn't have the power to blow the hair off a peanut. And they were defeated. And Joshua's winning streak came to an end. Because Joshua had never known defeat. Woo. So he comes to Ai and he's flat on his face, depressed. And the Lord shows up. He says, boy, get on your feet. Wake up. But God didn't wake him up to cheer him up. He woke him up to tell him, you better get your house in order. He woke him up to tell him, brother, the reason you've lost your fire, the reason you've lost your power, the reason your winning streak is broken, are you with me? Is because there's sin in the camp. Say, so bring it home, Pastor. They went from revival to ruin. 
You know what the reality is this morning? You know what your reality is this morning? There are three types of people here. There are some of you that are still in Jericho. You're still in revival. You haven't stopped praying. You stayed in your prayer closet. You continually fast. Heaven is open over your life. You're at Jericho, man. And there's some of you that you're at AI. Your life is a heap of ruins. But there are some of you, most of you, many of you. You're neither at Jericho or you're neither at AI. You know where? You're somewhere in between. The question is, where will you go next? Where will you go next? You're not at Jericho, you're at Ai. You're not at Ai or at Jericho, but you're somewhere in the middle. Six months ago, you were at Jericho. Woo! Nothing's gonna stop my prayer. Heaven is open. Heaven is open. Atmosphere. <laughs> Chains be broken. Holy Spirit. Heaven is. Heaven. See, some of you are not even there no more. You're, you're in between. <laughs> somewhere between revival and ruin. God is saying to you this morning to protect the power. Protect the power. I, I've determined you, you think it's been hard for you. It's been hard for me too. I've determined that I'm not going out of this year limping. I'm going out leaping. I'm coming out of this year with my hair on fire. I'm coming out of this year so fasted up and prayed up. I said, I came in with fire. I'm going out with fire. <laughs> Am I talking to anybody this morning? Am I talking to anybody this morning? I'm not. Woo. The devil thought he had me over the summer. The devil thought he had me right around September. The devil thought he had me right around May. But I came to serve the devil. Notice that there is a new anointing. And there's a fresh fire that God is getting ready to pour out over his people here at Victory Out. I'm not going to live in the middle. And the word for you is it's time for you to come back to Jericho. It's time for some of you to leave AI and to come back to Jericho. It's time for you to come back to a shout. Come back to a praise. Come back to your prayer closet. Don't you dare leave until the fire of the Holy Ghost begins to hit you. I'm going to need somebody right now. For a minute. Pull your mask down. Pull your mask down for a minute. Watch what happens. And on the count of three, I want you to shout till the wall 